Hello everyone, um, my name is indeed Neil Stewart, I'm Digital Library Manager at LSE Library. Um, for those of you with mobile devices, computers, tablets, you can have a look at the website I'm going to talk about while I speak. That URL, for those of you who might not be able to read it, is booth.lsc.ac.uk and I'm talking about Charles Booth London. So who you might ask was Charles Booth? Well, he was a Victorian businessman, philanthropist and social reformer in the middle with his family circa, I think, 1910. He lived between 1840 and 1916. And he had a project, and that project was to, wait for it, <laughs> discover the level of poverty in Victorian London. So Booth actually initially disbelieved that poverty was as prevalent as thinkers of the day proposed. But his project, which lasted over about 20 years, showed that it was actually much higher. Some 30% of people in a city of 6 million uh, lived below the poverty line. And incidentally, the poverty line was a, um, something that Booth himself uh, conceived of. So um, how did he do this? Well, the project team actually went and walked the streets of London and talked to people. So policemen, school board visitors, religious figures and residents, uh, residents and workers themselves. They recorded data, both qualitative and quantitative. And what was, so what you might ask, was produced. Well, we hold the full archive at LSE Library. It's a jewel in the, uh, jewel in the crown for us. Of note for this pr presentation, there were the poverty maps, 12 of them. And there were the notebooks, including the police notebooks. And it's important to note that those police notebooks relate to particular areas, so uh, amenable to geolocation. So what did we have? Well, we had one very old website um, from 2002, which by, uh, in terms of the internet, is positively prehistoric. It did a pretty good job of displaying archival materials, the maps, not so much. It had become challenging to manage as well. And we had one uh, slightly newer website from 2012, which is, was called Phone Booth. Someone had the, colleague Peter had the brilliant idea of calling that Phone Booth. It's experimental, prototypical, it has modern mapping functionality, and it did have geolocation in the notebooks as well. Pause for breath. So, what did our project seek to do? Well, we wanted to bring the functionality of uh, the online arc, the original website, together with that of Phone Booth. But there are also some institutional drivers. Um, 2016 was the 100th anniversary of the death of Charles Booth. So we had an exhibition in the library about his work and his projects. We had a research festival at the school talking about Booth's um, contemporary resonance. And there was a memorial event at LSE uh, for the many members of his family. So the work we did, first of all, we, we thought about our audience to discover who was using the old sites. And we found it was researchers, students and teachers, but also um, family historians, genealogists, and of course the mythical general reader, so people who were generally interested. User experience, we tried to pay close attention for, uh, to our users for what can be a complex archive particularly given that we wanted to relate the police notebooks to individual points on the map, and that is perhaps a bit tricky to explain to users. Just a quick mention of the technical work we did. It was all done in-house by um, our excellent colleague Tom Carter. We used IIIF, IIIF's Universal, Viewers, uh, Universal Viewer for viewing the notebooks, Open street maps for the modern street layer and elastic search for searching and indexing the notebooks. And here's an idea of the visual design. Um, the screenshots here give a, um, an idea of the iterative design process that we went through. Um, we've got we've taken coloration. The colours come from the maps. We've got LSE look and feel there. It's responsively designed, so anyone using this in the audience on a tablet or a mobile phone, it should. Uh, be working pretty well and I have to say well done to our design partners Mickey and Mallory for helping us with that. So here's what we came up with. Beautiful high resolution version of the 12 maps stitched together so we um, we joined them up. There's modern map application functionality going on here so you can drag, zoom um, and there's also there's opacity so you can flip between uh, Victorian London and the modern map. And this gives this is a bit of a close-up Note here, this is Booth's classification, so uh, black streets are deemed to be lowest class, vicious, semi-criminal, very Victorian. These dots represent geolocated notebooks, so you can actually click on those dots and access the notebook for the relevant area. 
this is an idea of what we did with the, the, the archive of notebooks. It may look a little bit white uh, on screen there. It hopefully gives an intuitive way into the archive uh, of the notebooks. Um, uh, so the search and browse. Note also the thematic design continuity from the maps. And this gives you an idea of uh, accessing one of the notebooks itself. So this is the universal viewer, as it were, in action. It allows very deep zoom, so you can really zoom into the beautiful kind of Victorian copper plate script. And page turning, and we've got descriptive metadata around, uh, around, the, around the sides there. And this is one of the ways in that we try to devise. So we try to make it easy for people to access the archive. Um, and we call these highlights. They are admittedly a little bit on the, perhaps on the salacious side, but they've, been, they've proved to be quite successful as well. They, they have given people an in to the archive. So what kind of reception did we get? Well, we, we launched at the end of November last year. We had a very su successful publicity drive. We had a lot of hits. We saw about... Um, at its peak, we saw over 2,100 sessions in a single day on the site. We got picked up, of course, by LSE channels, but also um, notably Londonist and the Smithsonian magazine. And it encouraged us to do more work. And the, the one I'd like to pick out here is this last one, this idea of a gazetteer of Victorian London. So um, we didn't um, have the ability to search the map of Victorian London with the original application. Interestingly, some 50% of streets from that time have, been, have disappeared or have been renamed or have been, in other ways, merged into, um, uh, into other streets. So we want to we wanna address that, and we're going to do that by creating a gazetteer of Victorian London. And um, shout out to the GB1900 project who are helping us do that. Thank you very much. There's the URL once again, and there's some image credits in my email address. Thank you. <laughs>